Hey guys, Matthew here. So today I'll be starting a new series which is going to be catered towards new players. And it's basically going to be telling you guys which unique you should and shouldn't pick up, why, how they have the possibility to be uh, worth anything given certain roles on them, or implicits via corruptions, and things of that nature. The reason behind this is basically I was streaming in the past few days and people have asked me quite a few times like why are you picking up this unique, why aren't you picking up those uniques, things of that nature. And after you know, a good amount of time in the game you get used to it. But in reality if you don't want to have to price check everything one by one, uh, it's a lot faster. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm basically going to do one video for each type of item. So today we're going to be going over unique amulets. In the next video, we'll do belts, then rings, and so on and so forth until we've gone over every single unique. So these videos might be somewhat a little bit longer than uh, the usual, and that's because I want to actually tell you guys a little bit more than just like pick this up, don't pick this up. Give you some actual reasoning why, and also talk about corruptions and roles on the items. Uh, when it comes to trash uniques that you shouldn't pick up, I won't really give a reason. I'll just say that it's bad and nobody uses it, most likely. Uh, just one thing you should know, though, is pretty much every single unique when it comes to very, very, very good rolls, or almost perfect rolls, uh, are going to be worth something. That being said, uh, perfect rolls are very hard to get. For example, if we take the Eru Kutiki, uh, it has a life roll from 30 to 50, which is 21 different rolls, and then fire resistance from 20 to 30, which is 11 different rolls. So if you want to know how many Eru Kutiki, uh, on average, you're going to need to get a perfect one, it would be, you know, 21 times 11. So one out of 231 Eru Kutiki, on average, is going to be perfect. That's if it's not weighted, and I'm pretty sure it's not. Uh, which means, in reality, unless you pick up like a ton of them, you're never going to get a perfect one. And if you don't get a perfect one, they're not worth anything. So that's basically an example of uh, an item I would not pick up. So Ruku Tiki, definitely do not pick this up. Uh, Sid, Sid Heath Breath. Oh, actually, one thing before I go over all the uniques. Uh, just know that this isn't necessarily going to apply to every single league as meta shifts and shifts in the meta and what people are playing honestly affects the price of uniques more than anything else. Uh, a unique can be complete trash for an entire league and the next leagues some change in skills happens and all of a sudden they're worth a lot. For example this league we could take uh, the amulet of Esh which is voice of the storm turned into chore of, uh, choir, <laughs> a choir of the storm. Uh, past leagues, at least the ones I played, for example Harbinger, these amulets were about one exalt each. Currently in, in Incursion they're over three exalts just because of the arc meta. So that's definitely something you want to consider is the fact that meta shifts affects the price of uniques. That being said though most of the uniques are going to keep a pretty stable price through the leagues at least when it comes to pretty trashy ones. For example Aruku Tiki, like I said I don't pick this up, you shouldn't pick this up either. Uh, Sid Sidhi Breath, I don't know how to pronounce that. Definitely not something you should pick up either. Uh, it's not exactly great. Kuri Ward, same for that. It's definitely good on day one or two of a league uh, because it gives you a lot of just base stats and movement speed. So typically it's going to be worth something very, very early in the league, but it just drops off to the point where it's worth like one chance or after first week. Stone Lazar, same goes for that. The ascetic is a prophecy uh, drop. You can't actually drop it, at least from what I know. So you're not really going to be dropping those other than if you're doing the prophecy. And they're worth a little a little bit. Like a good roll can be worth a good amount. Uh, I sold one for 20 chaos, which had a perfect quantity roll and like a minimum rarity roll, for example. Ignamon is not something you should pick up. Azuri's foible is something you should pick up. Not because it is worth a lot, but because a good roll on it will be worth a lot. For example, a 22 to 23 plus percent mana uh, with a 95 plus percent mana regen rate will be worth up to one exalt. A perfect, perfect roll can be upwards of two exalts. And if you get a good corruption on it, it can be upwards of 10 exalts. For example, I corrupted, yesterday, I corrupted one yesterday with uh, 23, 22 percent increased maximum mana and a very bad increased mana regen rate. But I corrupted it and hit enemies uh, can have w one additional curse or something like that. And all of a sudden it's worth over 10 exalts. So a good corruption on these, definitely very good. Uh, Duresso Salute, from what I know, doesn't actually drop. It only comes from Divination cards or uh, 
you know, league specific type of drops. Uh, but they're worth a little something. I've sold one for 10 chaos this league, so, and I think it was a really, really bad roll. So they have a possibility of, of being worth, worth something. That being said, they don't actually drop, so you don't really have to worry about this. Extract, extract Rementis, I don't pick those up. They're pretty damn garbage. Uh, Shaper Seed, same thing for that. Even with a good corruption, I don't think these are worth anything. Victoria's Acuity is another one that actually doesn't drop, at least from what I know of. I've never seen this drop in my life. Uh, only from divination cards and whatnot, so you don't have to worry about it. That being said, it is worth a lot. Astramentis is one of the better amulets, especially with a good roll. The closer you are to 100% attributes, the better and the more, you know, worth it's going to be. That being said, if you get a good corruption on those, uh, they can be worth a fortune. So, for example, plus one max res, plus one curse, uh, things of that nature, uh, can be worth a very, very good amount. Plus one frenzy charge i believe or something of that nature uh all these corruptions are worth a lot so i typically val my astramentis because on base they're not worth that much they're worth a little bit like a few chaos uh but a good roll is worth a lot more but then if you val and get a good corruption uh they can be worth like a lot a lot more so typically i val most of the amulets i actually pick up blood of the corruption is actually the corruption corrupted version of tier of purity uh so you're not actually going to drop this amulet. Carnage Heart is another one that can be worth a good amount depending on the rolls. So I pick my Carnage Hearts up and I identify them for sure. Uh, what you want to be looking at to be worth anything really is 35 plus all attributes, uh, 17 plus all amount of resistances. Physical attack damage leeches life is not that important, but it's okay. And then the 38 or so percent increased damage while leeching is also pretty good. It's a Im pretty important stat because this is more of a melee users use this like slayers and whatnot and they're always leeching so they're always getting a pretty good amount of damage from it. Uh, as Again, once again, an amulet, a good corruption on this will be worth a lot more. That being said, if you have some very very nice roll, these can be worth a good amount so you know consider what you could be losing if you were to val it. Eye of Chile is worth one chaos. I don't really pick those up. They're not that big of a deal. Hinokora's Sight, I've actually never seen this drop in my life. Maybe it's League specific, so I can't really say anything about those. Malagara's Cruelty is a trash unique. I have a perfect one right now with perfect maximum life and very good uh, Frenzy Charge and Power Charge with a 22% Wed Corruption, I believe. And it is still worth absolutely nothing. Uh, so unless you get plus one curse or something of that nature, it's not really worth it. So I'd only pick those up if you have... Uh, if you're going to vow them and hope for something decent as an implicit. Otherwise, I wouldn't really, you know, mess with those. Don't even pick them up. Same goes for Tier of Purity. Even a perfect roll isn't worth a whole lot. Uh, but you can always, you know, corrupt them for a good implicit and hope it doesn't turn into Blood of the Corruption. Because those are pretty worthless. Angel's Harmony is complete trash. Uh, basically, it takes out some crit multiplier for some crit chance. And that is never a good thing for any amulet. So even with the GG Corruption, this isn't worth anything. Curry Charge is the upgraded version of Curry Ward, so you're not actually going to drop those. Knight's Hold is something I've never seen, but I'm pretty sure it's League-specific to Talisman League, uh, so you don't have to worry about those. Same goes for Blightwell, Rigwall's Curse as well. Uh, Star of Rayclass, I believe, is a crafted one. You don't actually drop it. Yeah, it's a ruby ring, a unique ruby ring with an onyx and a lightning warp, it seems. But I've never done this, so you're not actually going to drop those. You don't have to worry about it. Biscos is something you always want to pick up. They're worth a few exalts, pretty much every league. Uh, Sacrificial Heart is the new amulet for incursion. Uh, these aren't worth a whole lot. They're like one chaos. That being said, I'm guessing a very, very nice roll on it might be worth something. But I think people who use this this upgraded to uh, the Xerfi's Heart, and at that point, it loses the rolls on the flat damages which means typically the roll doesn't really matter. You can pick them up, though. They're worth like a chaos, I guess. Alar Dex is another one that even with a good corruption, it isn't really worth anything. I have one with plus one uh, curse right now, I believe, and it's not even selling for a few chaos. So that's not something I'd even pick up, the Alar Dex. Vol's Devotion won't actually drop, from what I know. It's league-specific, or it, I believe it might actually drop from the boss, Vol. Uh, not exactly sure, though. But you do want to pick those up. They're worth a little bit, uh, actually not a little bit, a little fortune. They're worth a lot. Uh, so definitely pick those up if you ever see them. That being said, I don't actually know if they drop. 
The Halcyon is the upgraded version of another amulet I'm going to go over soon, which is uh, the, what's the name of it, the Pandemonius. So you're not actually going to drop those, so you don't have to worry about it. Zoth's Heart, obviously something you want to pick up. It drops from the Xoth Breach or the Xoth Breach Lord in his own in its respective domain. So definitely something you want to pick up. Those are always worth around 10x plus every league almost, so pretty damn good. And Gamma Hutiki is the upgraded version of the other one that I went over at first. And uh, you're not going to drop this, don't have to worry about it. Marlene's Fallacy is the, basically, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Is the opposite of the other one that I went over earlier. This one gives a ton of critical try multiplier, but it removes uh, a bit of crit chance. That being said, these are worth more than the other one, but still not worth a whole lot. That being said, with a very good implicit auto corruption, it can be worth something, but I typically don't even pick them up. Voice of the Storm is worth a few exalts, as I said, this league currently, so you de definitely want to pick this up. They drop from the Ash Breach or the Ash Domain from the boss, and I believe from the Domain also. A Winter Heart is not something I pick up. Actually, it's pretty garbage. There's just nothing there. It's some Cold Resistance and some Life. Very good on day one of a league and things of that nature, but after that, not worth anything. Uh, whenever it, it doesn't offer any damage, it's just Life and Cold Res, so not exactly great. Uh, Chalisman won't actually drop. The Anvil is not something I pick up. It's got, first off, it's got a lot of rolls on the amulet. It would take hundreds or even maybe thousands to get a perfect roll. And even with a perfect roll, it's not really worth anything. Maybe with the GG Corruption, but I typically do not pick these up. Uh, same goes for Warp Timepiece. I don't really pick them up. That being said, I'm guessing with a perfect roll and a good implicit, it might actually be worth a good amount. So you could pick those up and identify them. And if you get a good roll, just valid and pray for a GG Corruption. Uh, why? Because attack speed is nice, movement speed is nice, and skill effect duration is also pretty good. And, you know, some increased leech of both life and mana is a, is okay, but it doesn't really offer that much damage. So it's not going to be worth a whole lot, but with the GG Corruption and a very good roll, it could be worth something. So you might want to pick them up. Personally, I don't pick those up. Talisman of the Great Wolf, uh, sorry, Eyes of the Great Wolf is a talisman. It's from... Um, Divination card, so you don't have to worry about these. They're not going to drop. Ephigon is the upgraded version from a prophecy of um, the Ignamon. I don't, you're not going to drop those. You don't have to worry about it. Presence of Chiula is the upgraded version of the uh, the other one, the uh, Eye of Chiula, or whatever it's called. Uh, you're not actually going to drop those. You don't have to worry about them, but they're worth a ton because you need to use the Blessing of Chiula on the other one. Rash Kador is... Patience. I think I've seen this like once in my entire life, and it's not worth anything. I typically don't pick this up, uh, but maybe with a very, very good life roll, it could be worth a little something. I don't think so, though, because looking at the stats on it, it doesn't look like there's anything. Uh, maybe if Ignite Meta came back someday, it could be worth something because of increased duration, but I don't think it's worth anything. So, personally, I wouldn't pick these up either. In Presence, they're, you know, some Elder Amulets. You definitely want to pick those up whenever they drop. They're always worth a little something, at least. Pandemonious, like I said, is the uh, pre-upgraded version of the Halcyon. It is a uh, an amulet that drops from Full Breach and his domain and the boss, respectively. So I'm not sure what they're worth this league, but typically they're worth around one exalt, from what I remember in other leagues. That being said, this league, I have no idea. Uh, Exhaust Blood is the up upgraded version of Exhaust Heart, so you know they'll have to worry about this. They don't actually drop. Eye of Innocence is something I've never seen in my life, actually. So, I can't really tell you, but looking at it, it's got a lot of damage while ignited. And also some fire damage leashes life while ignited. So, this might actually be decent, because it has a pretty good uh, damage on it. Uh, maybe with a very good corruption, this could be worth a, a good amount. That being said, I'm not sure, so I would always price check them. If I'm telling you I'm not sure about it, just go ahead and price check it. You're not going to lose anything. Uh, Choir of the Storm, like I said, upgraded version of the, uh, uh, what's the name of that other amulet? I can't remember, but it's the Esh amulet, and that's worth a whole lot, but that's not actually going to drop. You're going to get the unupgraded version. Yoke of Suffering, that's a good one. It's always worth a good amount, so be sure to pick those up. I think they're a boss-only drop, like, uh, what is it? Yeah, they drop from, uh, it's a, um, what's his name? It's a guardian, it's elder guardian uh, drop, so you're not actually really going to 
like not if you if you drop these some guardians so you want to pick it up obviously it's worth something surfy's heart like i said is the upgraded version of the other one so you don't actually you're never going to drop this but they're worth a good amount uh blood grip is not worth anything uh so you don't really have to worry about this but i believe um yeah, Blood Grip, like I said, not worth anything, even with a very, very good corruption. There was a league, I can't remember which one, where Blood Grip had some worth because of some weird build going on about bleeding that uh, some streamer made. I can't remember, though. Uh, but currently, it's not worth anything. Even with a good roll and a good corruption, I don't think these are worth anything. So I wouldn't worry about those. You don't have to pick them up. And Gloomfang is another one of those drops that is from uh, an Elder Guardian. So... Obviously, you want to pick those up. So that's going to be it for the, the the amulet section of the sorry of the series. Tomorrow, I'll probably be doing these like once a day. So tomorrow, we'll be going over belts and then rings and so on and so forth until we're done with every item in the game, pretty much. So, like I said, this is more catered towards the newer players. Obviously, I'm not taking a whole lot of time to explain like extremely because I don't want the videos to take forever. This is already been going on for 16 minutes. Uh, but I think this is basically like a very good baseline to know what kind of items or uniques in general you should and shouldn't pick up. Because a lot of people, I see a lot of people picking up like every unique and then, you know, identifying them, price checking them, be like, okay, it's worth one alchemy. Let me just vendor it for some alchemy shards. And all this time wasted is basically time where you're not farming, where you're not getting, you know, exalt drops, Chaos drops, currency drops, uh, uniques, good unique drops, and things of that nature. So, definitely something to consider. I think it's going to be a very good series for the, the newer players. And like I said, I'm going to split it into many, many videos. So, you're not going to have to sit there for three hours listening to me talk. It's going to be in short videos like this one. Well, somewhat short anyways. So, that's going to be Matthew signing out. Hopefully, you enjoyed. Hopefully, you learned a little something. You can always catch me on my stream at... Uh, Twitch.tv slash Path of Math. It's gonna uh, link is gonna be in the description. Sorry about that. And uh, until the next one, that's gonna be Matthew signing out. Thanks for watching.